you know, uh, to have it when I when I start it, it needs to start when I say start, not when it wants to start. You know what I mean? So I think it's this one right here. And then I think it's this one right here. But no, not that one. Let's see, start on time. Let's do the start on time and let's see what that gives me. Now while I'm doing the start on time junk, uh no, nah, see I don't want that type of start on time. So we're going we're gonna to do that. We're going to get rid of that. I'll, I'll take care of that later. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gents, let me tell you what I done did. Oh, wait. Let me tell you what I done did. Mm, 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 mm. I went to the IRS. Went to, to the IRS? That's right. I went to the IRS because they tried to send me to rehab, and I said, no, no, no. Y'all ain't sending me no place. And guess what I did? Guess what I did? I did a conservatorship. Now, hold on. Let's let's do the custodianship first. I want to find out about custodian. Okay, that, I want to find out about custodian first. Don't want to find out about no conservator first. Oh, it didn't want to pop up. Hold on. Let's let's go here. It'll pop up now. Ain't gonna play no games with me. See, a custodianship is a trust set up by a court for a minor or incompetent person. So you don't want custodian because you ain't no court. I know, I know, but you ain't no court according to that. So you're going to do the trust, then you're going to click them and next them, next them. And then you're going to do conservatorship. Because remember, there's a straw man. We just told y'all about straw man. Didn't we tell y'all about straw man? Straw man. Legal fictionia. Legal fictionia. Straw man. Hey, hey, what up, Brock? Hey, y'all, I've been talking about Barack, and I've been watching some videos of him when he was just leaving office and talking about cinema sins, you know, because these people had a link on it, and I'm sorry it ain't pulling up. There you go, straw man. So the straw man, he, he, ain't, got no, he ain't got no brain. He can't think. See, I think, therefore I am. Okay, that's your, that's your issue. As long as you can think, you ain't no straw man. A straw man can't think. He need a brain. Okay, I think therefore I am. Okay? So, strong man can't think. He ain't got no brain. So, a conservatorship it is one where the court has assigned somebody. Uh uh, no, no, no. Or a person to the legal control over another person or entity. A person under conservatorship is a conservative. Or a protected person. I want to be a protected person. You can't be a protected person. Only the straw man can be a protected person. Okay, I want my straw man to be protected. A uh, conservatorship is created by a court under subject property or a person. Okay. I said under order. Sorry, I am tired. Anyway, I created a conservatorship for my straw person. That's right, I created a conservatorship. That's right, because my straw person, he ain't a person. He, he uh, a, a legal fiction. That's right, legal fiction, he can't, he incompetent. Legal fiction, legal corporations can't enter into a contract because they're incompetent. They can't think for themselves. So corporations cannot enter into contracts because they can't think for themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, when they say the United States can enter into a contract just like any other person, that's a lie. But we're not going to talk about that right now. A, a competent person is somebody who can think for themselves. You don't believe me? Let's look up the definition of legal definition of competency. Legal definition of Competency. I know it ain't T E N C Y. See, I ain't competent right now. I'm tired. But you know what being tired does for me? It gives me energy. It gives me, gives me, gives. See, it wasn't E. I messed up. Okay. More generally, oh, there's that guy again, General Lee. Hey, General Lee, what you doing? You still fighting that war? Okay. It refers to the ability to act in circumstances, including the ability to perform 
a job or occupation or to reason or make decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, a corporation cannot reason on anything. They cannot make decisions. No, a corporation needs other people's help. Well, people, when they come together, they're a corporation. Yes, but they say corporations are people. Ladies and gentlemen, if I had a bunch of people helping me make decisions and you couldn't see them, oh, you would say I had problems. I know you, you got a lot of problems. Now, look, you better shut up and get on, out, uh, go on outside. Now, it's only 80, 87 degrees. It don't even feel like 87. You just took a jacket off a moment ago. So go on outside. Go play. Okay, so you'd be saying, I got problems. Okay, a court of competence. <laughs> How can the court be competent? A court of competent jurisdiction is a court that has the power to adjudicate a case before it. Look, legal competency, that's all we were looking for. In general, able to act in the circumstances, including the ability to perform a job. A competent person is a person who can think for themselves. See, concerns the mental capacity of an individual to participate. See, mental capacity. Corporations have no mental capacity. Go ahead. A corporation has no mental capacity. I promise you. Let's do let's do case case text. And then I'm gonna go on about my business. Cause I just wanted to say I created a caturbinal chip. 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 I wish I had thought about it a long time ago. I did think about it, but I didn't think about it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's exactly what the straw man, the straw man is incompetent. And because the straw man is incompetent, he can't sit up there and think for himself. And because he can't think for himself, I do the thinking for him. And because I do the thinking for him, okay, okay, that's why right. I do the thinking, I do the thinking. Got another video we're going to be doing. We're going to be talking about some collateral, y'all, later, okay? We're going to be talking about some collateral mode, okay? Now, I want y'all to see what we're going to be talking about, because y'all don't understand. We're going to go to section 902.3. That's right, 902.3, best radio station in town. It talks about a security interest. Do you know that where the collateral was not associated with the loan? What do you mean when the collateral was not associated with the loan? You're not paying attention. Pay attention. Watch this. Hold on. The loan was for the purchase of the motor home, but the home itself was not collateral for the loan. Okay, when there is no collateral for the loan, that's right, you didn't have no collateral for your loan. Doesn't matter if you signed it afterwards. It makes it an unsecured loan. Now, in any case, okay, this, this is an exception. As otherwise provided in section C through I, a security interest is enforceable against a debtor or third parties with respects to collateral only if value was given. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if there was value given when you gave me my loan, I have the right to ask and contest that. Federal Reserve notes are not redeemable in gold or silver or any other commodity and receive no backing by anything that's been the case since 1993. The notes have no value for themselves. No value. You gave me nothing of value. You gave me nothing of value. If you gave me nothing of value, wait, hold on. Then that means you have no collateral interest. UCC, Article 9, Section 2 uh, 203. Article 9, Section 203. Article 9, Section 203. Article 9, Section 203 under Uniform Commercial Code. A debtor has rights in the collateral. If a debtor has rights in the collateral, or the power to transfer rights in the collateral to a secured party. Oh God, no, 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 no. The debtor doesn't have rights to the collateral. We just talked about that. Didn't y'all hear me? I said, hold on. The loan was for the purchase of the mobile home or the home, but the home itself, see, home. The home itself was not collateral for the loan. In every single case, that's the case. So how they do this? So, it's not a secured loan. The debtor has authenticated a security agreement that provides a description of the collateral and the security interest covers timber cut, blah, blah, blah. The collateral is not a certified security 
and the possession by the secured party under section of the law pursuant to the debtor's security agreement. The collateral is a certified security, blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, none of these apply. You had no rights to the collateral. None of these apply. You had no rights to the collateral. The loan was for the purchase for the home. But the home itself was not collateral for the loan. Why? Because you got a loan to purchase the home, but you didn't have any interest in the home prior to the purchase, so the home could not be collateral for the loan. Ladies and gentlemen, can you show me that case, honey? I want to see that case. Let me see that case. United States versus $44,000. United States versus $44,000. Who the is $44,000? Man, let me see $44,000. $44, Come here. Testify on the, on the witness stand because I have a right to face my accuser. How could the United States be suing $44,000? $44,000 is a violation of every aspect of law because $44,000 does not exist in law. It's not even a fiction. A fiction cannot be sued in court. Go tell your mama that a fiction cannot be cross-examined. I have the right to face my accuser. I have the right to cross-examine my accuser. And a fiction cannot plead the fifth. I rest my case, Your Honor. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm having one of those days. One of those, I feel good. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to talk about that stuff later. Okay, let's get back to what we were talking about, ladies and gentlemen, because what we mentioned to you at the very beginning was the most important thing. Okay, what we mentioned to you at the very beginning was the most important thing. So hold on one second. Well, I'll do it now, but i just so tired, y'all. So sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of being criticized. I'm sick and tired. Oh, I'm sorry. That was Nappy Roots and Anthony Hamilton. I apologize. Uh, sick and tired. Anthony Hamilton, Nappy Roots. Come on now. All right. I want y'all to pay attention to a corporation. That makes it incompetent. Corporation cannot think independently for itself. That makes it inco uh oh. I don't. I don't. I, all right, conservatorship. That's what it was. It's doing the conservatorship. So you click next. Next. I mean, continue. Continue. Just click it. Click it. Click it or ticket. <laughs> click it or ticket. Who gonna ticket me? That's why you need a. It's conservatorship, ain't it? Because you got some issues, homie. Your mama got... Don't be talking about my mama, mother. Well, well, who you saying, mother? You see what I'm saying? That's the type of day I'm having. It's a wonderful world. It's a good trip. Lollipop is a sweet trip to the candy shop. And the bubble gum spells. And a little bit of puppet cum tails. <laughs> You should turn on some music. I'm not turning on no music for this video. I'm going back to where we were because I got to get this video done. We got less than 15 minutes. We got less than a minute to get this thing done. So I just want to show you about a corporation, not a corporation, not a corporation, not having the ability to think for itself. That's all I want to show you. Let me show you. Let me show you the way. Hold on, y'all. See, this is for those of y'all who didn't believe me. The corporation cannot act for itself. Uh-uh. It may only act through its agents. Agents are the officers, directors, employees, and other persons who may be authorized to act for the corporation. A corporation is incompetent. Ladies and gentlemen, a corporation is incompetent. So corporations need conservators. <laughs> Do a conservatorship for your corporation. Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> yes, I am having a great day, and it is nice to be having a good day. That means I'm in a good mood. Oftentimes, people, I'm not in a good mood because I'm dealing with a lot of stupidity, dealing with a lot of ignorance, dealing with a lot of stress, dealing with a lot of deadlines, dealing with a lot of worrying about everyone else. That's what I'm usually doing. 
I'm stressing not today, which is a good thing. It is 88 degrees, and I promise you, at 84 degrees, I still had a jacket on. I tell you, I have a problem regulating my body temperature. And I had a jacket on, and I was still feeling a little chilly. No wind or anything, it was just still chilly to me. Amazing, ain't it? Anyway, one cannot maintain a corporate structure when it endures to one's benefit and then ignores the constraints of corporate law when it does not. That's not what I was looking for. I'm talking about a corporation can't think for itself. Okay, that's the same thing. Corporation can do all that. And so it is not a fiction. Excuse me, a corporation is a fiction, you ignorant mother. To reduce it to a fiction is to make nothing of it. No, that's not true. A fiction is a construct. It is something created by the mind. That's what a fiction is. Then it disregard, uh, then to disregard it as a fiction is to disregard nothing. A fiction cannot be sued or sue making or make or perform contracts that's right you're absolutely right isn't that what i just said since a corporation cannot think for itself wait hold on hold, wait hold on no this ain't the court saying this a corporation is not a person but has a legal or real individuality neither is it artificial save as it is a generation of law rather than of nature it is a simple fact a legal unit a very no sorry man this court was stupid this is the court saying this a corporation has always been a fiction it's been a figment of the imagination a group of people forms a corporation because it is a legal fiction it's a creation without the people coming together it doesn't exist okay so to have this court say something stupid like this, we reject the fundamentally unsound and obsolete and obsolete the thesis that a corporation can be regarded for any other purpose than a mere fiction of law. To reduce it to a fiction is to make it nothing. Then to disregard, okay, so they're saying they, re they reject the unsound and obsolete thesis. It doesn't matter if you reject it. We're talking about law. A corporation can do all of that. What? A corporation can be sued and be sued? Yes. Make or perform contracts? No. Technically, a corporation cannot enter into a contractual agreement. Ladies and gentlemen, a corporation cannot enter into a contractual agreement. Only competent parties can enter into a contract. Shh, don't tell nobody. Okay? A contract must be done through competent party. Okay, corporations cannot own property or possess property because a corporation in and of itself has no ability to possess anything. Commit torts and crimes. Corporations cannot commit crimes. It's the officers. That's why I say the United States itself is not the culprit. It's the employees, the representatives, the agents, the officers who commit the crimes. Okay? Let's see, we consider, so to consider it is to blind, wait, so to consider it is to blind thought to large and important reality. Oh, stop it. A corporation is not a person, but is a legal and real individuality. Neither is it artificial. Excuse me. The Supreme Court of Oregon says different. The corporation is an artificial creature. It's a creature of the state, owing its existence and chartered power to the state. Okay? Save as it is a generation of law rather than of nature. So that means that it is artificial because it's man-made, man-created, man-invented. It's artificial. Ladies and gentlemen, go look at the definition of artificial and tell me if it doesn't describe exactly what this court is saying it's not. It is in simple fact a legal unit, a fiction, a very real one, 
endowed by its creator with all of the rights and attributes of a person. Actually, no. A corporation cannot be endowed with rights of a person because those rights come from a person. Persons are endowed rights of a person because they receive that from their creator. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Well, corporations are not created equal to men. Go ahead. Go ahead. I dare anybody to challenge me on that. If you do, you're an ignorant mother... I'm sorry. I apologize. I, when I opened the door, uh, a fly came in. And so he's going to have to die because I didn't give him permission to fly around me. Oh, is that what he's supposed to do? Anyway, let's get back to this. Um... It is so much too so genius, generous, that to attempt to define it rather than to describe or enumerate its particular features in terms of law of persons tend to obstruct rather than to facilitate comprehension. Ladies and gentlemen, do you see what these idiots have just done? Much worse is it to fictionalize in decision concerning a thing about which there is no trace of fictitious that's ladies and gentlemen it is a fiction because it's a creature of the mind corporations do not exist show me walmart anybody show me where walmart is no no that's a building with a name on it show me where walmart exists oh what well, well, the united states show me where the united states go ahead and point to where the united states is go ahead no, no, that map doesn't exist. That map is just a, a construct. That map is an artist's rendering. It's a photo. It's still an artist's rendering, people. A photo is not the actual. A photo is a copy of the reality. A photo is just that, a pattern. It's not the real. That's why an ID does not identify anyone. I think, therefore, I am. So only I can identify me. Do you not understand? I haven't been saying I think, therefore I am all this time just to be saying I think, therefore I am. Without thought, you don't exist. Have you ever heard of someone being brain dead? Oh, yeah. I, I, I've met you once. Your mama. Well, technically, I am supposed to be... Oh, God. I forgot the E-N-T-L-Y. I apologize for that, y'all. All right. Anyway, it caught my attention, all right? I wasn't even looking at it until now. See, I think therefore I am. Ha <laughs> ha! As I said before when I did, does everybody have a twin? The writing. I think therefore I am, someone said, was a profound statement. The most profound they had ever heard. However, just as you saw me do, so do you also. I set the pattern for you. I think is the more profound of a statement. We are humans. We are designed to copy. That's why we do what we do. That's why we plagiarize. That's why we see something somebody else has or something somebody else done and we imitate it or we emulate it or we try to refabricate. We are human. Monkey see, monkey do is what the phrase means. We copy what we see. Children copy what they see. We do it all throughout our lives. So thus, when the true Lord, Christ Jesus, said, I have set the pattern for you, that just as you have seen me do, so do you also. Then he says, all will know that you are my disciples. Why? Because Christian means Christ-like follower. I don't care if you don't like the word Christian. This ain't got nothing to do with you. This ain't got nothing to do with your likes. This has got everything to do with reality. Ladies and gentlemen, a corporation cannot copy anyone. A corporation cannot copy anything. I make the statement all the time. When you have these companies... From one country to another, none of them are teaching the same thing. They're all different. The policies are different from one country to another based upon culture. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. 
I can truly say that I'm part of an organization that is the same in every single country. No matter where you go, they're teaching the exact same thing. No other organization can say something like that, but Jehovah's Witnesses can. Yay! It doesn't matter if you don't appreciate the fact. See, I only deal with facts, ladies and gentlemen. And I know, I know, I know you're going to tell me about all of the stupid facts that you've come up with. But I'm talking about the relevant facts. I know you're going to tell me that your facts are relevant too. But they're not relevant for this conversation. See, this conversation was for me letting you know that I created a conservatorship for a fiction. Okay? Oh, by the way, I'm pulling up the laws for the, the Bill of Rights. Not Bill of Rights, dying it. Sorry, I apologize. I said Bill of Rights. I'm pulling up the laws, ladies and gentlemen, for... Uh, you know what? I don't like this. And that, it's my fault because of how I did the screen, and I'm going to have to undo it. Okay? I'm going to have to basically undo things and take care of things. So I apologize to y'all that I ain't did nothing right. Okay? This is the... Uh, what is this stupid act called? The United States Federal Arbitration Act was done by Congress. See, these are the statutes at large. I went to the actual congressional site. Let's make sure which one it is. I went to gov.info and gov.info. Well, govinfo.gov. Sorry, govinfo.gov. I went to govinfo.gov. I put in the volume. It took me over here. Then I went here. Hold on. And then I clicked on here. But these files are big. Okay, they're taking up all my bandwidth. So that's why. Now, this is supposed to be a 15-minute video. I didn't talk too long, talk too much, and I got to get off of this. Oh, and I'm also pulling up the trading, the original Trading with the Enemies Act. Why? Because we showed y'all something yesterday. We haven't finished talking about it. We are going to talk about it. We are going to talk about it. There's a big, huge elephant in the room. Man, I didn't see them elephants. Well, then how come everybody else ignores them? Man, they, because they're stupid. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Title 50, where they moved 12 U.S.C. 95A to. Remember, everybody was using 95A in 2012? Well, they moved it over to Title 50. They just moved it. Didn't get nobody's permission. Didn't say, hey, guys, we're, we're moving the, the title that says you get to discharge your debt. That's right. We're moving it so that you guys won't even have an idea of how to discharge your debts after this. So what we're going to do is we're going to be giving you guys an idea. I'll be doing a video later. I just put up a video from last night. Just put it up this morning. It's going to take a look at the video. Go to the title. I promise you you'll love the video because I love it. And with that being said, hey, I got to go, ladies and gentlemen. I got some work to do. I promise somebody I'll get something to them, so I got to get that done. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Stay out of trouble. Okay? Just stay out of trouble. All right. Speak to you later.